Yeah. <laughs> I'm super happy. Like, <laughs> like starts sleep. clapping. I'm over, I'm over the moon when we catch one on the blood bunny. Hmm. The static. And if we catch a blue marlin on the pitch bait, I'm just blown away. Bro, you just I caught you had a caught six and twenty the other day. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and how did it start out? Like what was the origin story? Too much alcohol. Really? Okay. <laughs> Because if God wanted us to have fiberglass boats, he would have given us fiberglass trees. It's it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit, as yeah. far as if I can remember uh-huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome back, State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Carullo. I'm joined with me, my co-host, Anthony Pino, with Hooked Optics and Captain of the Blood Money. Uh, today, our guest, Cody Polar. Uh, from the Karma uh, 64 Titan boat. Uh, thanks for joining us, Cody. How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah. I think we're doing the same as An- uh, Anthony is. And I mean, he's not too far down the road from me. But Are you in Cape May, Cody? Been, yeah, I'm at South Jersey Marina. I got you. Yep. Yep. I do. So I was actually down there in Ocean City this weekend visiting my family. And uh, I had a driver around this morning. Captain said, hey, don't, you know, don't worry about coming home. It's going to blow. You know, don't worry about the ferry. They're going to shut it down. And then, so I booked a ticket, come back this morning. And of course they shut it down again. So yeah. I drove all the way around and yeah. got here by lunch. They got you. So, anyway. that, that's where you're from, Cody? Uh, I'm from Carroll County, Maryland. Uh, it's middle of nowhere town. Uh, like probably two and a half hours from the beach down there in Ocean City. Yeah, that's where I grew up. Nick, nobody that's from Ocean City, like very rarely when you meet like a fisherman from Ocean City, they're not actually from ocean city they we all migrate down here because we like fishing and then we get into the industry like i'm not originally from ocean city there's a handful of people that are but but i'm most i would say two-thirds of the people are just not from didn't grow up here you know because it's a it's a small small town you know yeah so it's it's nice though it's tell you what there's a big difference between ocean city and cape may yeah i was uh yeah let's uh yeah just Tell us, I know you, Cody, but yeah. nobody else knows you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll get into the differences of Ocean City and Cape May. Cause I found that issue. Uh, of course. I mean, you already know my name. Uh, I'm the mate on the Karma. Um, this is my pretty cool feeling. Uh, I mean, this is my first actual full time job fishing uh, 365. Um, started fishing. I'm 31 years old. Um, I got my first mate job in my early, early twenties, like 23, I think, and charter fished in South Carolina, um, down there for a few years. And, um, I tried the school thing, you know, college and whatnot. I, I, I did that and I was in the golf industry and, uh, I, my mind was on hunting and fishing more than anything else ever. It's all I thought about was fishing. It's all I thought was about hunting, whether it was catching largemouth bass, whether it was catching stripers off the dock by my grandfather's house down there in Anderson City. And uh, I remember uh, I was 12 years old. Uh, I think it was 12, 13. My grandmother took me to uh, my first white moment of the way in down there at Hard Rock. And uh, I mean, it's just, you know, you know, it is that week. It's it's crazy. And you see it and you're like, you know, you, you want to do that one day. Nope. Kind of It'll fuck you up. It, it ruins you. And I, I remember being what's really cool when I was down there and fishing out of Ocean City is when we left in the morning and you look over and literally it looks like half the town is standing over there on the jetty rocks. And it's I used to stand over there and watch these boats go. And now I'm going. And yeah, uh, yeah. it's it you know, it's pretty cool. And like Anthony just said, it'll fuck you up. And I remember calling my grandmother actually and saying I quit my job today. She's like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going fishing. And just, I uh, just went after it as much as I could. Uh, ask walking the docks down there. I was living in South Carolina. That's where I went after school. Uh, pretty much. That's where I was working. And I started, like I said, I started down there in Charleston and fishing down there. Um, and I, I remember seeing, you know, the outlier or full, full pool, what it, what it was then and seeing all the big boats and, you know, everybody that goes in there. And the Toller's Cove was, you know, where I started. And, and I remember I was, I used to be scared to death to go walk over to those docks, go talk to those guys in the bigger boats. Cause I was mating on a 37 Cabo convertible though. I mean, I think we went like, I thought when the boat went 22 knots, it was really, really fast. And Anthony, how old, uh, sorry to interrupt. Anthony, were you, did you ever like go out there when you were like a real little kid, like to the weigh-in? Yeah. I mean, uh, I can tell you, I, I remember 
go into the weigh-in and stuff. And, but I remember that the year I was like 17 and my, I, we fished a couple of days before, uh, it wasn't like, I was always super into like boats and like, we always had it. We had a 29 aqua sport when I was a kid, my, my grandfather had one and my dad, and my uncle. And like, I remember growing up and knowing what the white Marlin open was. And I, my dad, they would always leave me on the dock. Cause I was like five or six. So like they would come back and they would catch like they would catch nothing. They'd catch like an A tuna and I'd be like, that was the coolest thing ever, you know. Um, but when I was 17, I fished with my uncle. Um, and I had fished before, like offshore quite a bit before with my uncle, but I'd fished like the day the Saturday before the White Marlin Open, and we got back and sunset they just finished sunset as it as it is now, and the whole marina was full, and that that was what messed me up with seeing all the boats packed in together everybody like you know people pulling in from other places and everybody you know it's a small community so everybody like knows each other and you're like that boat says it's from from south carolina or florida but you know some of the ocean city guys are like hey man how's it going good to see you again you know and i just thought that was cool that like everybody knew each other even though they're not like we're and that was kind of the same way I, we used to go to the way into but I, I don't think I really fell in love with it until I saw all, all that, you know, like yeah. I, it was always like an event, like some people, I never, it wasn't really like a goal of mine until I saw all that. And then I was like, I'm going to be a fisherman, you know? And it was like, I was 17 is kind of old, like for some people to get in the, in the fishing, you know, like for some. Yeah. I thought time. when you told me, I thought you were going to say you're like, you're going to be like four years old or something. No, I, yeah. I would say that. I, I mean, I remember the boats coming in, we would, we would be one of those boats that actually would go fishing in the White Marlin o during the White Marlin Open, but not fish it. I remember doing that one time and just being like one of those people that got in the way in the end. Yeah, that. Doesn't, that doesn't sound like a smart <laughs> move. <Yeah. Well, laughs> That's a terrible idea. We're not Pinot family, we're not the sharpest knives in the box. <laughs> um, yeah, so I remember like seeing all the boats go in and out and the whole line and everything. And my uncle would fish it on his boat and other boats. And I thought it was... I thought it was cool, but when I was 17, I like really fell in love with it. I always liked boats and I would like fishing, but seeing that white marlin open was like the reason that I started fishing. You know, I think it changed it. Like I said, it fucked fuck me right up. Like I was going in into my freshman year in college and I didn't think about anything in college until except going down there and getting a job like yeah. when I after my freshman year. It's it that place it it'll uh like you just said i mean it'll screw you up pretty good but i remember i remember going you know like I, I, you know seeing the weigh-ins and all that stuff and then watching the boats leave and in the mornings and and like i said you know i'm like man i, I want to do that one day well here i am you know years there later you are hanging yeah, and, hanging uh, big white marlin yeah <laughs> i got lucky <laughs> um yeah it's i wouldn't change anything for the world that's for sure and i, I remember my family was they're like, you know, oh, you're going fishing. Like, you make money doing that. Like, they think, like, <laughs> I mean, everybody in my family is very outdoorsy. Um, my dad's really into freshwater fishing. Uh, actually, my grandfather and my, I got to know my great grandfather growing up. Um, I mean, to, I mean, to where like I could, you know, actually go hang out with him and do stuff, you know, when I was in high school. And uh, he actually had uh, an egg harbor when I was growing up and uh, a main ship. And so I was hanging out in the boat yard working with my great grandfather. No, not working i was probably getting in his way or on his nerves but i was still in the boat running around it so the whole boating the whole salt water thing it, it's been around literally my entire life i mean i wouldn't have it any other way awesome now i'm just addicted to marlin fishing that's all i want to do so how do you um, how did you get your job your first job in south carolina cody did you just beat the docks uh i actually one of the guys that i worked with on the golf course uh his cousin cousin whatever you know Cousin's second cousin, cousin whatever cousin. it was yeah whatever it was um they um they booked a charter with them they were in the they're in the cabo and i got all asked to go and that you know and then went you know we went down there and you know, I, went, I went on the charter again i was probably like 23 i think it was and i had a really awesome south carolina fishing day of like huge mahis that you know not like the ones we catch up here in the northeast that like you could barely make a sandwich out of, but, you know, big mahis and we're bottom fishing, you know, catching vermilions and we didn't, we didn't see any billfish that day, but it was just a really, really fun day. And I was just like, this is awesome. 
I knew that it w- what was out there, but then when you actually did it and then it was a father and son that owned the boat. And so they would, I mean, basically the son would be in the pit. And then we literally got done that day. And the next day I called that captain and I said, Hey, I was like, look, I was like, I don't know a whole lot, but I'll try really hard to learn to like, you know, just, I was like, can you take me? Like, can I come with you and help? And he called me a couple of days later and was like, can you fish this weekend? And I was lucky because I, I worked like every other weekend. What was what my schedule was. And I luckily I had off that weekend and I went and fished Saturday and Sunday and both uh, what we would do. We would troll on that boat. We would troll till lunch. If it was good, keep trolling, meet fishing wise. But then if it was, and then if it trolling was pretty slow, you know, go bottom fishing. And like, I don't know if you guys ever bottom fish in South Carolina. It's pretty on point. Like you, you're going to catch multiples of whatever you want down there. And it's all good eating too. And that's what I did. And I just tied a lot of uni knots and a lot of chicken rigs and sent it, man. <laughs> that's, that's all I knew how to do then. You know, no dredges. I think I fish. I thought fishing with sticks rods was crazy. Yeah. And now, I mean, we, of course, we, you know, Marlin fish with four and tuna fish from six to 16, depending on what freaking boat you work on. But um, that's what I did. And I, I got offered to come back. You know, hey, we got some trips coming up to you. I was like, yeah, sure. Be right there. And kept showing up, kept showing up. He slapped me like 50, 100 bucks here and there, gave me some boat shirts. And then, it's literally all she wrote. Then I got to the point where I was taking my vacation time from my actual job, taking my vacation time to have off and then go down the road, you know. How much take longer vacation was time. So you uh, quit the golf course? Uh, it was about a year because I knew I had to save money if I was going to, you know, obviously save, you know, save up more money than you normally do. Like I'd, you know, make yourself eat ramen noodles and terrible cheap chicken from the grocery store. I knew I was going to, you know, I'm going to quit this thing. Long-term goal was fish, you know, 365. But when I got lucky and I met some people and I actually started fishing, you know, full summers. And then I would go out West to Arkansas and South Dakota and guide waterfowl hunts. So that's what, that's what? what I used to do. And that's what I, you know, not anymore. So what, uh, what are this like if from guiding waterfowl hunting and going fishing, is there any similarities to it? Charter fishing? Yes. Yeah. Like different, different guests. Like charter fishing, you know, you might have the same guest two days in a row, maybe. Yeah. Um, but then guiding hunts, it's you might have you're going to have the same guys usually from. I've had guys for literally one day where they're just like local people, maybe that was in the area that want to come in that they didn't have the opportunity to, you know, with the property to go do what we did. We would take them for like one day, or I'd have guys for a week. And that's, those are my group of clients that I had all week. And yeah. that's, I mean, that's really the only similarity to me. Did you I like mean, have to teach them how to shoot or to, were they any good? At shooting or like... uh, some of them I probably should have. Yeah. Some of them I probably definitely had, should have taught how to shoot, but, and you know, it's with them. I mean, it's a kind of the same thing, you know, you, you be their best friend for the, you know, the entire fishing day and ask them all kinds of questions and act like you're you know really interested in their life and how they're doing, and, you know, what that stuff is kind of doing. You know, you make a lot of a good, you make a lot of friends and connections and, I never had to teach anybody how to shoot. I I reckon I probably made some recommendations on how they yeah. should shoot, but it's not like, no, it's not like charter fishing where like, rod, you know, your rod starts working drag and you pick it up and you're like, all right, here, hold this level one, do that. It's none of that. Yeah. So they, they, at least they have a, typically they, they know how to use a shotgun. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time it was me just caught doing all the, you know, the duck and goose calling and telling them to shoot. And then, I mean, and then there's times where they wouldn't be sh- hitting anything and you'd like have like ducks and geese like right in their face and you're just like killing guys and you know, nothing, nothing would die. Or, like, you get one frustrated would like, like when the Marlins start going away, like on the blood money, typically like when they start, when they start swimming away or you just like, you yeah. people to get it together. <laughs> my, uh, really, uh, <laughs> my boss, uh, this year, uh, well, not well, who I work for now my boss he's 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 a great guy and he really cracks me up and the one day you know hook one cap starts to put us in the turn and one of his friends is just like just going like this just cranking on the fish i'm like what are you doing and like crank you know like there's just i can see this huge belly look i'm 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 still new to all this stuff but i know that that belly cannot be there and i'm yelling the guy's just real slow just going like this not like we're still in a turn i'm doing you know trying to you know move you know lines around and stuff like that and i'm freaking out on luckily it's one of the guys that fishes with us every time it's one of my bosses very good friends and you know on the boat 
he's like, I got to crank faster. I'm like, yeah, man, you got to crank faster. Uh, then I like later on after the trip, I, I went to my boss where he was sitting out on the mezzanine. We're just sitting out there hanging out. And I was just like, Hey, I, I I'm sorry for yelling earlier. I, I did, I'm just really excited. And, you know, of course, you know, I want to catch every single one. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, you keep doing it. Your, your intensity is just fine. Don't apologize for nothing. And I was like, okay, cool. So yeah, you do get really frustrated when they go away. <laughs> <laughs> like Nick, especially this year. Yelling around. I'll tell you, one of the good. You couldn't, you can't let him go away this year. Like, you were gonna, like, you could miss, like, it was so bad up here in this year, Nick. Like, if you missed, like, two, two, you weren't seeing two more, you know, more often than not. Like, oh man, we just went over for two. That's, that's it. That's one it. of my, yeah, Pack them up. fishing, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Fishing has not been good this year. And obviously, up here, and, uh, my boss, he's like, he has the saying now. It's, it's pretty funny. He's, He's like, I feel like, you know, when we just whip out the bottom rods or like, you know, the electric rods that go like, you know, tile fishing or sea bass. He's like, I feel like we just gave up. And I don't like giving up. Do you? And I was like, no. Yeah. So just troll till it's over, you know. And, we, don't, uh, we, don't, we don't have that option on the blood money. We, we have no electric reels other than the dread reels. Dread, yeah. Well, I would, yeah, well, I mean, we had that too, but I, I remember those are the only electric ones we have on the, on the Karma, but break down your dredge. Get, you know, pull your, break your A-frame down, get out your bottom rod, screw your bottom rod on, change your spool and go bottom fishing. Gosh. I'm just like, damn it. You know, like, come home with something. But uh, I tell you what, and I, one of my most fun days, and I'll never forget this day, this year fishing, the fish were biting. Uh, the canyon lady was doing really good. Um, this is probably a couple weeks ago. Out there, the 450 square. And like you know the white mons are there like they're probably the most fish that anybody's seen up besides those guys in nantucket and up there which they have to, I hear about that stuff all the time being up here but we went out there my boss he's like all right we're going on an overnight and like, okay boss man shows up i think we left at one o'clock literally 15 minutes after i had lines in the water i had i missed the white one immediately and i was so mad i missed it and i was like good grief 15 minutes in and i missed like he just dog bones me on my right long well Long story short, my boss was the only one that came on that trip. So it was myself and my boss. And we stay out there all, you know, stay out there every night, put some sword and fish rods out, didn't catch anything, start fishing the next day. And basically say, I guess, to what, 12 hours of fishing, of actual fishing, four for 12 on white lines. And I saw all 12 of them. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm embarrassed about it, kind of, but not really, because literally it was just me and my boss, cockpit, and he's, you know, doing better. And learning, uh, he's is he really a boat owner, learn. Cody? Uh, not he's always had his own boat. Uh -huh. Um, he had uh, a 58 uh Donzi, um, uh, before this, I think it was a 58. He had a 58 foot express, um, but he kept down there in Stewart during the winter, same thing. But this is like we are basically like a brand new program. I got this you. is Who's his captain? second, Stephen Castellini. Oh, I know Stevie, yeah, gotcha, yeah. Yep, and he's he's awesome. He's great. I, I love working for him, and you know, I got a great captain and great boss. But going back to that day, I was I was like, I'm sorry, Cap. Like I'm like got like two rods in my hand. Like, That's never a good like, thing. No, it's never not a good thing. I one's on here, good. one's on here, and I'm just like, ah. And then like you know, you put one down, and you try to mess with the one, and then your flat line gets hit, and like I literally see the like the whites on both my flat lines, and I was just like wanting to pull my hair out, and then I kind of just laughed about it come home spend all that time out there and you saw 12 white ones and i get to put up four flags and i was so mad that you know i wasn't putting up 12 flags you know how it goes and but then i look back at it i was like you know what though i was like that was cool as shit and i had a really i mean it was one-on-one -on -one time with the boss hanging out having a good time uh him and i fought a double together that was you know cool not too many people you know do that and, and it basically got to the point where you know i know we only caught four we came tight on quite a few of those but they're just eating no teaser bites nothing just just knockdowns every time yeah they're just hungry and it was the canyon lady and us just going in circles around each other i mean i think that day between all of us i think we probably saw 30 some fish wow just so you two guys out there yeah that was it wow. how many they catch uh i think they went nine for 11 but that's a bit better yeah sounds, yeah, sounds yeah pretty good <laughs> but uh they had a full crew and they they got you know He's uh, old uh, Jamie Diller. He's got some. He's got two pretty good mates and some good. They got a good crew. And I was like, I didn't want to call him and ask him because you know I got mates number and be like, what'd you guys do? 
They had, I think, the one day before that, they had nine before like lunch. Wow, those guys go down the Palm Beach too, right? Saying that, that yeah, that break? somewhere Stewart Palm Beach area. Yeah, those guys are. I mean, me and Jamie, I talked to Jamie a lot. He's a fucking nut, but it's our custom boat, right? What custom boat? <laughs> yeah, that's a '65 Scarborough. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, he's bad. That's a Scarborough Senior, right? Yeah, one of the yeah. older ones. Yeah, yeah, because the Ricky Junior boat. Uh, I think it used to be the Den Boys. The '62 is sitting is our dock partner, and they look totally different. And when you guys all. Uh... Come down to Stewart. You guys do uh, some sailfish tournaments. Um, the boss, um, he definitely wants to, um, and I want to because I, I've fished all those uh, Stewart tournaments before when I was um, on another boat down there, and they're really fun and enjoyable. But I think um, the boss man, he's he's a tuna guy. He loves tuna fishing, and like their entire crew, it's Jersey man. It's literally tuna, 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 tuna. And then there's me and my captain. Life. We're like. Yeah, pretty much like tuna bars, tuna, you know, big eyes and all this stuff. And I'm just like, and I was like, man, and I was like, it's so weird coming from, you know, Ocean City. We get excited about tuna fishing. I, I do. Tuna. I'm not, I'm definitely not too good for some tuna fishing. So, like, I, I mean, I, I mean, trust me, I, I love, and I, I was like, look, I'm not biased, but, you know, I like, like last year before I was, we had two, you know, two or three good tuna trips. Tuna fishing last year was 10 times better than it was this year. All fishing last year was ten times better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally, literally ten times better. Um, oh, man. I mean, even yeah, and like I, I remember when we had a, took a couple charters last year, we were done. I had those trips and we we're done by twelve. You know what I mean? Like every the box is full and you're done, and, and that's fine. I like those days when you're just getting covered up and just a chaos. But days when we get twenty white marlin dates every day, but ain't happening. Every but then day. no, but. <laughs> You're right, but I just, you know, I like get one of those out of the way and put two, you know, have, eat two tuna steaks and I'm happy. And then other than that, I just, dude, I don't know if it was from being over. I remember when I was first started fishing up there in Ocean City, Anthony, and I was where I first started over there. I was over, I was working on the killing time, mm -hmm. but um, I was working for uh, Norton. Yeah. And uh, I remember standing over there. And I would just see all you guys from Sunset just come in and just look at all the flags and all the riggers and everything else. It's like, I need to be over there. And that's all I wanted to do. And just, yeah. I don't know, like the tuna things that, and you and, you know, Nick can attest to this. And my captain, he's, he's white model until he dies. And I, I, that's, I love it. And he's just loves him. He'll, he'll keep you in the turn forever. And it, it's awesome. I, I remember I used to be so intimidated by dredges and teasers, and sometimes I still am the way things go or what's going on, but now I just, like, let's turn forever, and I just want to catch them all. You know, like, a tuna doesn't, like, you know, your teaser bites, and I remember you know, used to get so excited seeing, a, you know, a teaser bite on a white one or seeing their bill come out and get, you yeah. you know, chased down your express or or this, I think, I don't know what this white one, that, like, during the mid-Atlantic, we had this white come up on the right teaser, and I actually have a video of it on my phone. And that it was just a little, you know, a little rat, and he just like just zigzag and like swimming with the express as it's coming in. You know what I mean? Just his his dorsal fin is fully up. You can see it's totally rounded, and he's just like zigzagging, like just swimming, like checking out the express. And we we caught him. But I mean, tunas don't do that. No, you know. No, you're right. I mean, and and then I mean, I can I haven't pitched a very many blue, you know, very many blue marlins, but I I, I remember what every single one did in my head. And I can still I remember being with John Mead and down there in Charleston, I literally saw the blue come off the teaser. And I remember seeing the bubbles come off of her bill. Yeah. They go spin and eat my pit. Like, I don't know. That's me. It'll change your life. I could care oh, less yeah. about a yellow fin after that. <laughs> you know, I don't care. Like even this summer, I really said, you know, I don't know what other mates do, but you just never know. You always hope for that banner day. Right. Like you just always hope for it, no matter what. You think it's coming. I've heard you. I've even heard you say it on the podcast. Like you, it's gonna come. It's gonna come. Or then now I'm to the point where like it's not coming anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean but this is, you gotta be, you gotta go. You gotta leave the dock with the idea that you're gonna. You're the, there's a possibility to have it. You know, it was it was it was much tougher so let, this year. You know, but yeah. we still we still left left the the dock with five six dozen baits rigged. Like you know, what if we. Our, our thinking was, man, they've got to be a pile of them somewhere because there's a whole bunch of them nowhere. Or there's none of them like anywhere. So when we find them, they're going to be a pile. But yeah, you be ready for this. You never know when they sh they show up. Well, I think I was ready for that day every time I left because just seven dozen every time. And Jesus, damn, one up, Anthony. Just, yeah, 
<laughs> I, I get Ayrton, Ayrton Riggs freaking seven dozen and, and if for one day. I'm like, dude, you're spending worse, spending too much money on bait. You gotta, you gotta. Well, you get, I mean, yeah, well, I'll get you get faster and faster. You, you, get faster and, huh? you get faster and, you know, how, you know how it goes. And I highly recommend any mate that's out there, which even now with some of these guys that are getting some of the jobs they're getting, it's kind of crazy. I recommend, I'm glad the way my career happened, uh, being a second mate for you know two really good programs and just learning and being faster and faster and faster and faster and faster to now where i'm by myself i don't have a second mate i why well, i i had one this summer really really good kid just want to learn about fishing i just taught him how to rig baits and he got to he got to do some ballyhoo dredge baits and some mullets and a couple hook baits and that was really it but he, he's, he's getting there but i mean you do all that freaking mullet rigging down there in stewart you never want to rig a mullet ever again. I've heard, you know, New Keg when he was on the podcast talk about, you know, you rig so many, your hands hurt. You know, when to touch them to put them on your dredge. Yeah. That is a true statement. Those guys are a different breed there, but it's, it's, it works there, you know. It's, it does. There's, I know. there's a definite reason behind why they do what they do there. You know, it's, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad I learned it. I'm glad I got to fish there. I'm, I'm glad I got to spend the winter there and, and, and do that with, you know, John. Old John Mead. He taught yeah. you how to rig a ballyhoo. I don't do it that way anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cap. <laughs> but no, he's he taught me a lot. He really did teach me a lot. And, you know, understanding, because I like, it's funny. Like, you look back and, you know, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm confident. Like, not confident, but like, all right, I feel like I know what I'm doing. And then you go step on a, a boat where you don't touch, really touch a rod as a mate. And you're just rigging baits and putting new bait out. And that's really, and to where like um, and then you know going in the turns catching multiples of the sails and stuff like that and i'm just like i remember like just actually doing that I'm like oh yeah and I, and I can i can you know twist up a freaking copper rig and you know make a belly who swims somewhat on its side you know but like then you like you step onto like one of those other programs and you're just like i don't know damn take whatever you think you knew and just throw it out the window because it, it doesn't work and it's not gonna work kind of deal what do you mean like fishing like when you went to Stewart, like fishing on a, a on a boat that's actually like a team, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you're like, like you're you're not charter fishing anymore. Uh, like you're not you're not you're not high fiving your angler. You're taking the rod away from them. Like what you need to do is get your dredges in the water and get them spread back out as quick as possible at all times. Yeah, it's a competitive. You still got a high five. I mean, I don't care who you are. After your baits are back in the water, <laughs> I always I always say I, I just can't believe that happened. We caught one. <laughs> yeah i'm super happy like, <laughs> like start like, slapping i'm over i'm over the moon when we catch one on the blood bunny I'm ecstatic and if we catch a blue marlin on the pitch bait i'm just blown away bro you just I caught you had a caught six and 20 the other day i don't want to hear it <laughs> yeah you had a really good day what are you talking about it was two days but yeah i mean but yeah you caught more in 12 hours than you did the whole season yeah I mean, yeah, but yeah, you gotta be. How many, uh, Anthony? How many white marlins have you seen this year? Do you have them written down? Ah, uh, I mean, we've on caught one, fifty. He's got them on one hand. We we we. I mean, we caught 50, 52 or fifty three marlins all season. So Jeez. I mean, I would say it was probably like, I don't know, to, to see to to for us to catch fifty two, we need to see a hundred. You know, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I mean, there was a couple of days. Our ratio was atrocious this year like we're last year i mean we caught 91 and we probably only only saw like 150 but you got top boat last year didn't you no i was second the running fields so. oh yeah shit sorry <laughs> you hear that anger <laughs> throwing, me, throwing huh? salt in the wound I, yeah so. it's okay yeah hey we were i think we were right now we were right there i think yeah well of course it's always those boats and oh gary you know he's uh we were i mean we weren't yeah, we weren't too far behind you guys. On what boat wouldn't the buckshot? I got you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a good I mean, we did well. We didn't like we did fine. Our our ratio was much better last year because it was good enough that like I could keep the guys like focused. Like they would yeah. I knew that we could go out there and maybe, you know, get five, ten bites a day. Right. I didn't I didn't know that, but I had a good feeling about that. And then and then this year it's just like, you know, we have five five bites and I don't know the days that were slow that we had good good ratios like one day we were five for five one day we were three a couple days we were three for three one day in the white marlin open we were 
one for three on whites and we missed a blue on the plug that one hurt because i if we would have been two for three and a blue we would have been like second or third top boat yeah i that think was, do, what you know it's bad so we we fished the jimmy johnson this year and uh our first day fishing we went one for one on whites of course yeah one for one that's really all we caught that one day our first day fishing one for one didn't catch nothing like our second day of fishing third day of fishing we went two for two so we caught you know three whites the entire tournament we finished i think sixth overall in that tournament yeah i mean you didn't have to catch very much like we were we were 10th in the white marlin open 10th or 11th and we caught a blue and a blue and three whites i remember you telling talking about the people on the way out this year they had like they had like a a festival at the inlet nick so there was like one on the way in so like if you had a good day like there would be like there's like a thousand people at the inlet <clears throat> and like if you had a couple flags you were getting like people were fucking excited you know like yeah. but if you there would be like one one in ten boats would catch something you know uh, there's people there when you're coming home this year yeah like i mean there's always is but they did a they did uh, f- like the White Marlin Open put a festival at the inlet as, as, oh, cool. as along with the the uh, tournament. So I, that was that was kind of cool to like people were like because you don't get any if you have a good day in the White Marlin Open nobody cares. They're like, did you win a million dollars? No, you fucking yeah. suck. You know, yeah. like if you didn't win four million dollars this year. You were just garbage. You know, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> I was actually pretty upset. Uh, I mean, it all worked out this season, but I was we didn't we were gonna. We were all across, you know, going to fish everything the open this year. You know, I, I was I basically the first, you know, that month of August for me, my schedule was gonna be uh the open and then fish, you know, the White Mountain Open, Beach Haven, the White Mountain Invitational up at Beach Haven, mm-hmm. and then finish Beach Haven and go into the Mid Atlantic. So I was fishing three back to back. And well, long story short, uh we had some engine problems and we actually had some crack liners on the starboard motor eventually it should have been found a long time ago um first it was i don't know it was a long story but we got her fixed and we didn't get the fish tournament unfortunately but went and fished the beach haven that was terrible fishing and of course the mid-atlantic so yeah let's talk about that what the mid-atlantic oh the mid-atlantic was good yeah and then yeah and then you got the win. like so yeah it's how was that tournament i mean walk us through um i, I mean just want me to do like fish. Oh, so actually, you have good fishing, like in general, or no? I got you. Not at all. Um, I actually have it written down here. Let's see. That's a good trait. I don't write nothing down. You don't? I would have figured you definitely wrote things down. Oh, <laughs> well, here. Uh, it, it's kind of cool. Uh, this year, this one I might throw out. I mean, I might save the month la- that last week of August and throw everything else out because I mean, I write what I do every day. Or if I write, you know, what I, you know, what I did that day or what I need to do. Cause I'm captain, you know, you might tell me. Do you write stuff down, Nick? Do you write a lot down? Yep. Really? I mean, I write what we catch down, but that's about it. Like, Uh, I don't know. Unless I, if I start writing, you know, things I do, then I can look back and cause I forget and I'll just look back and I'm like, oh, that's what I did that day. Or do you think it, I mean, do you, do you look back on them typically? Yeah. Like, especially like if, you know, random maintenance stuff. You know, I'll know when I. Oh yeah, it. yeah. I'm just talking about like a fishing thing. Oh no, I yeah, and I write down. I'll write down fun fishing days. You know, I'll I'll write. We caught cock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but do you like? Do you write down like the wind direction, the sea temperature, or like that that stuff? Like, well, I'll, I mean, if it's good, I'll write like what the condition was. Yeah, like, yeah. I'll write, you know, the moon, the tide, and the wind, and things That's like cool. that, and. And then like a year, you know, then following year, I'll look back and I'll kind of look at it and be like, all right, well, similar condition. Maybe it'll be good again. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's more thing that I've like, like, you know, hearing, you know, I know the other captains that wrote it down too. And, you know, like the conditions and stuff. And I just kind of like, like I've been, so like fast forwarding to my winter season, I'm, uh, Nick, I'll be joining you guys down there. Obviously well, down there in Stewart, the boss likes a tight fish. And I've put a kite up twice in my fishing career. And that was in Ocean City with yummy flyers and fang hooks catching elephant tunes, which was really fun. To, but mm-hmm. excited to get on the kite fishing thing this winter for a little bit before we go to the DR. But uh, anyways, nice. that, all Hopefully those conditions. Be good that this year. 
you know, hopefully like those conditions that like I hear you guys talk about, I don't know, like the, I don't understand it. I ask my captain questions about it all the time and he's literally like dr- taking out a piece of paper and drawing how the kites work. And then what, do you, what is that thing? You don't north some, or you don't south somebody like cut them off or whatever it is. North oh, somewhere. That's what you're north supposed somebody. to do, isn't it? Nick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't be, yeah. Well, it just, it's just neat to me. You know, I'm, I'm excited to learn about that a little bit more. And, but, uh, Anyways, I got my Mid-Atlantic week written here. Uh, all right, Monday was day one of the tournament. We fished that day. I have written down no bites. Uh, Tuesday, we laid. Uh, you know, that was our first lay day. I remember uh, Cat wasn't – he wasn't real happy with how he felt something, you know, didn't like something. He dove that day on that Tuesday, and we hauled out Wednesday morning on our second lay day and got brand-new cutlass bearings. Oh, wow. Uh, did, it fix it? Did, it fix, did it fix the vibration or whatever you had yeah yeah, yeah. we had a I, I don't know there's apparently these ones that are supposed to last however many hours right yeah or something now like the new fancy ones well they didn't last i think they lasted almost like 500 hours less than they're supposed to apparently Wait, uh, which ones can you i don't i don't remember the name if you say the name i probably the green one are they green yeah yeah the crypto quiet ones yes, yeah those, those ones you have those I anthony mean, no i just the regular regular rubber ones man i don't know who makes them but the brass and rubber ones the the old substance old in yeah you, you change them once a year and off you go like ours are we didn't even change them we're still on the same ones from from the dr like our shits we're ready are they're about worn out so have you heard people switching to those crypto ones yeah i've heard people switch to them and you know i can't say it. i i don't know enough about them to be to to say whether i like them or not but i know you know i'd I don't know much about them to be honest with you. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna. That's lie. what uh, they lasted that's what 500 had, hours Nick. less. Yeah, Cap. Uh, he's he's very very. Um, he's I think he's 52. And I'm pretty sure he's been around boats since he was one. Yeah, Steve's been uh, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've learned. I've really I've learned a lot from him. I I really enjoy it. Um, he's always teaching me something, and I, it's really cool. Yeah, but anyways, uh, Nick, to answer your question, I he wasn't a fan. And he's like, because basically. He uh he dove you know I know how you captain you know basically just like driving your truck or your vehicle every day and you drive it every day and you know when something's not right right yeah and you know he's like you feel something I was like I I don't know I mean I don't want to say yeah and I don't want to say no because I really just don't know I mean it's just it's not, I was like nothing really feels out of the ordinary he's like you know just something ain't right and that first late day we had he dove he's like we're hauling out I said okay I didn't ask any questions. Damn, that's we hauled cool. out. I, I like that move he did. He dove down. He probably saw him wore out or something. Oh, you can move it. You can move the shaft. Oh, yeah, wow. that's yeah, that's and, that's how I tell. Like when you pull the props off, you shake the shaft. If you got play in it, then it's it's time. Like that. Yeah. So he shook it with the props on. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably yeah. And uh, so basically, we hauled out. He's like, we're gonna haul out tomorrow morning, and I was just like, is it that bad? And he's like. Um, he's like, I want new cutlass bearings. And I was like, okay. And then also you, too, I, Nick, do you ahead. have the what bearings do you have in the wire transfer? It's the regular rubber ones. Yeah. I love but, but when I was going back in the water the day I was leaving the yard, those green one, the crypto ones that just like rolled out, and the the guys at the yard had just got them, and yeah. they're like, oh, we're putting in these in the next three boats, and I like felt like an idiot. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going back to water. I don't have these things. No. So now I'm I'm just happy like I'm. I mean I'm sure they're yeah I'm sure they're fine. I mean we had when we first got the boat the the previous captain had the like the Orcot ones in it the, which looked the same but they were a different material and the boat was a lot it would they would last a lot longer. They were straight Orcot I I believe and I have to figure it out but I believe the Crypto Quiets are like a a different combination of Orcot and and something else and yeah they're made of something yeah after he told me i can't remember what it was but it like, feels like carbon like, but yeah the problem with orcot bearings is they yeah. will they will literally eat your shaft if the boat's not moving like if the boat sits for a long time they will eat your eat in into the shaft and and pit but the, i guess that was those crypto quiets were like the the happy medium between the old rubber ones and the the regular the the orcot ones and i just was like let's just put the i felt like the boat was a little little loud and rumbly the when we had the orcot bearings so i just switched the old i believe it's tides that makes them with the old rubber ones i and, think i forget 
I remember he got his hands on something and he, he didn't, he was just on, you could see it in his eyes. He was on a mission. He's like, we're getting this fixed. And we're going back in the water. And when actually after, you know, we popped them off, put the new ones on, we went, we hauled out at like 5.30 that morning over there at Canyon Club. We're back in the water by like, I think 7.30. Oh, wait, let me, hold on. And then was the next day when the one you caught the fish? Uh, we saw four the next day. And the one of the ones we caught, uh, yeah. So it was, and I even thought about. Could you it tell? Could you tell Steve? Like, was he way? Was he more confident after you took the boat for a sea trial? And then, you know, I'm sure. Oh he, yeah, it's like, like he got like his swagger back. You know, yeah. like how like he's like Nikki, he's how, long, how how much does that sort of stuff play in in into you? Like, if the boat doesn't feel right or something like that? Because I don't know. I've been. Oh, before, for me, I'll 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 lose my mind. I am like super yeah. weird. If I like hear something, I'm like, that's it. We might as well just go back to the dock. <laughs> I mean, I, even yeah. like sail fishing, like even on outboards, it's uh, I'll, like I'll hear one of the outboards and I'm like, no, nope, that's it. We're not catching anything today. Have you yeah. seen like, have you, cause you get the, you get to see the sails when you're kite, or when you're like in the shallows down below, down south of Miami and stuff like that. Do you see them? Do you feel like you can see a difference in the behavior with one boat to the ne next? Yeah, I mean, sometimes, I mean, like I said, you know, sometimes you don't know what it is. You know, maybe it's just a day. Some days, like, you see them, and they, it's like they either see the boat and they kind of, like, fade off away from you, or, you know, they'll, like, swim through your spread, and they, like, you know, they don't eat anything, and you're like, what the yeah, fuck just is that? Bird. I've been on a lot of boats. I've been fortunate to be on a lot of boats, man, and so, like, some – like down home Carolina boats and that are rumbly and vibrate all day. Yeah. And like, we get like, we were like some of the days we would get them, you know? And then I get like, if there's something like, if I bend a wheel and there's like a, a real vibration, like that's going to affect the performance, I'm bothered by it. But like, I feel like my, my cutlass bearings are worn out, but if right now, like on their, on their last leg, it's the end of the season. So, but if I were to go fishing, you know, next time we have a weather window, we didn't catch a fish. I wouldn't blame it. Like, I wouldn't be like, it's a color spinners. But, you know, I know people that do. Like, I've seen, I mean, one of my heroes, Johnny Duffy, he'll just help he'll, he'll throw propellers in the trash can, you know? Okay, don't like <laughs> those. Like, nope, not these ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's... Hey, if I had the money, I'd be doing the same thing. Yeah. Fuck these ones. Yeah, but definitely. I, that's so interesting, Cody, that you said, like, he, you know, he immediately got confidence back because i think i think so much is mental but if you don't feel like you have all the if you oh if yeah you all the right stuff you it'll it'll throw throw somebody off like nick for sure because it was i remember it was that uh one of our uh guys in, on the crew he was staying on the boat for the week during the tournament and, and then you know steve and i came and he went over there with us and you know, change we change them out try to help you know get it done as fast as possible right because we don't be out of the water you know we're fishing tomorrow i'm you know i want to i gotta rig bait and do all my stuff and go through all that whatever you know hurry up but we can't got back in the water and then i'm not sure if you're really familiar canyon club and then south jersey there's like where you go into like the, basically the delaware i think it's the delaware bay whatever it is the back bay that's up here and that's where like you just kind of do like it's like a drag step pretty much yeah yeah that canal that's right there and like he immediately just like start pinning it up, and he's like, "You feel that?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "He's like, that's so much." He's like, "Ah, much better." And I'm like, "All right, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay." And uh, yeah, he was then definitely in such a better mood. And after that, you, you, like you just said, it, it, and I could see it because he he's like, like I said, he's he's very quiet, and like you can just see it on his face. You know that something's bothering him. Just like well, you know, but uh, we got it fixed, but ran well. And that uh that next day we went uh we saw four whites. One of those whites that we caught was actually it was a beast. It was huge. Uh wait, on back hold on, back on what we're saying. Thursday. Anthony, we were running out like last trip in DR. And I'm like, it was like slick calm, like the most beautiful day in DR. I mean, anybody had ever seen, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, nah, I can't believe this. This is like ridiculous. And running out, and all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, I felt like a little weird vibration thing and i'm like what the fuck was that <laughs> and i like immediately pull the boat back to neutral make my mate jump in the water i'm like there's something in the wheel there's something in the wheel he jumps in he's like there's nothing in the wheel i'm like nah I don't, I don't know i'm like we hit something or i was like something was weird i don't know what it was but like i, I i'm like i get crazy 
Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had that where I'm like, you, like you, you get something wrapped up where you hit something and you're like, then you throttle back up and it's like, is it okay? Or is it not okay? No, and then you get in your head. Cause then, yeah, you're, like, then you're like, oh, I'm like, oh my, it's, 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 a, it's, you know, it's one degree hotter. It's, it's, it's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, should, we could do a whole podcast on that. That sort of hocus pocus. That's for sure. Right. I uh, what I do now, I, I've been, uh, well, I, I drive home a, a lot. That's kind of like what him and I do. He drives out, I'll drive home kind of deal. And then, so I've been, you know, obviously learning more and more of like, you know, what load we're at and, you know, you know, learning all your numbers on your screens and stuff. And, and I just sit there and stare at them. And then like, there's times where like, even me just being like new, just driving. I mean, yeah, I'm an autopilot, but I'm still like just staring at the numbers, staring at, you know, staying awake, driving home. And like once something moves like one time, like something goes from 170 to 171. I'm just like, uh, you know, like, yeah. if, you know, but I'm, I'm like, Hey, is that all right? He goes, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm sure at, you know, the day you'll get to a point where you're like, yeah, somebody's like, there's an alarm going off. I like, see and you just be like, don't worry about it. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. Just, more and let's go. Fish you. <laughs> just hit the little sound button. and turn yeah. It off. Yeah. <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You don't even have alarms on your engines. Do you, Nick? No. <laughs> what are uh, what's in I that boat, Nick? Not original wire transfer. Original MTUs. They're called one eight one eighty threes. They're like okay. They're like tractor engines. <laughs> oh wow! I, 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 I can't complain about this boat because holy smoke, she's quick. Yeah, the C thirty two eight series, right? Yeah, it's really neat seeing forty two knots. You guys built that boat? Uh, no. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm correct about this. Uh, this boat was built in 2016. Um, it was in the Gulf. It was called the Overrod. Um, and I'm pretty sure my boss is a sec only like the second owner. I got you. But uh, yeah, she. But Steve's run uh, That's not the. That's the same boat that Steve ran, isn't it? Or no? It, it, the other one. This is 64. The Trust Me Two was a 62. Yeah. I got you. And damn, yep. he's ran two Titans. Two Titans, yeah. Wow. Yep. I don't know. I know the people that. We're on Titans now, and they're like, live and breathe them. Say your boy, stuff. your boy Kyle came Sherman. down with some nonsense the other day. Came down to Ocean City and some yeah, I saw him. Absolute, I saw him tie up. Absolute nonsense in that Titan. Yeah. Fucking thirty, blown thirty out of the north. He's like, <laughs> coming. I tell you what, this thing, this is probably one of the best boats, if not. No offense to the blood money, since I've ridden on that boat, but this sucker eats it up. It's really, really nice. Really, really nice. Like you think, like you know, you guys in your like, you feel like you're gonna like hit like the pothole, what I call the pothole. Like and you're coming off a wave, it just is like a little spring, and just just keeps going. Like it doesn't pound. There's none of that, none of, nothing whatsoever. And I mean, we fish in some pretty rough stuff, but yeah. uh, it's it's a it's a beautiful boat. I'm really happy with it. Nice. It's I'm I'm pretty lucky how I feel about it. It's awesome. It's a fishy boat. I think they cut the on this on this boat though. He like cut the transom. So if you look at uh. Three's enough, Kyle's boat. If you look at his boat, the transom on that boat, his transom's way higher. And hmm. then on the other Titan, if you look at, it's actually pretty neat. The Crisdale, Crisdale, Three's enough. Uh, three's enough was right next to us during the Mid Atlantic over in the marina. But then there's Crisdale, and then the A knot or a knot, however you say that, which is actually the old Trust Me Too, Anthony. Um, I don't know why he did it, but the, he cut the transom off. Said so we're not, we go in reverse. I have like once we untie the good fish, I literally have these things that plug my house pipe that that I put in there every single time. Or I'll I'm get always it. thinking about doing that. I think every boat should have that. So much as water. As soon as it's the... like, yeah, oh well, yeah. If we went into reverse without them things, I'd get wet immediately. But I mean, I don't I mean even now it's still not that bad with the lower transom, but it's cool, it's sporty. I like it. <laughs> but uh I mean she caught a winning fish, so that's pretty neat. So, all right. So you, you caught, you saw four. We saw four day, on Thursday. Yeah. After you changed the bearings. And then, uh, man, we really got way off track there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we saw four. And actually, the one, one of the fish we caught on Thursday was huge. It was probably the biggest white mono I've ever seen in my life. Why didn't you and kill then, that? He bill wrapped himself and shaped off. Like, to the point where, like, my gut, my, my, like, I remember look, talking to my tower guy and I was like, hey, yeah, like, I just got bit. Because I, I, I stand, I hold like I'll stand behind both the longs and have my hands resting on them. Uh, I just, I was like, I just got bit. What's there? And 
you know, you guys see anything? No, no, no. And then this thing jumps. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, That's not a blue marlin. And it was, yeah, the biggest white marlin I've ever seen. Long story short, he got himself bill wrapped. Uh, and he came off. Oh, well. And then Friday, um, we were fishing up in the Linden Cole. And uh, one bite. One bite, one fish in the boat. And he came home. And it was, i tell you what, I, the when I look back at it now, I had on my phone, I, I watched the whole fight. And I think the fish jumped like five, six times, really, really lazy. And it, we weren't even sure if we were going to kill it. I knew it was a nice one. Like, I'm like, that's no rat. Like, that's a good fish. And I, on the side of the boat, that, that, that white, even if you look at it in the pictures, it looked like, it looked like, he, I mean, if you're going to, you know, speaking about the gym, it just looked like he skipped leg day. His head and his belly was really, really big, but then he got really skinny in his tail. And I was like, that's a nice one. And, my captain and I are talking about it. And I actually on the side of the boat on the bright work, um, we took electrical tape and measured out, you know, 69 inches is what it had to be to kill it in the tournament. And uh, I basically it was a little six minute fight. I didn't gaff him. We didn't do anything. I just, one of, one of our guys on our crew uh, grabbed, had one hand on his bill and I, I flicked the leader off my hands and reached over with both hands and just yeeted him into the boat. And then once he measured him, I think it was like 76 inches is what it was. Good God. That's a big one. 76 by 25. You didn't think he was big when he jumped? 76 inches? Yeah, well, I was like, eh. But, like, he was just skinny. Like, it's bad. I, don't, I don't know. But, I mean, it was nice. But, I, I get, all right, no bullshit. Literally, Anthony, the fish that we saw that day before, made that thing look like a little, you know. I believe it. Bitch. Yeah, like, I was like, oh, my God. And, like, yeah, that's a nice one. And I was like, all right, we're, I was like, Cap's like, yeah, kill him. <laughs> and, like, yeah. literally, just, I just reached over and just came up by his bill and laid him out and measured him and. How much did it weigh, Coach? 75 on the dot. Um, catch 23, I think theirs was at their their sitting at first was 73 pounds. And then that that bite was actually really neat. And our, you know, if you could ask for a perfect scenario, I guess, you know, that's pretty good. Fishing, you didn't gaff it, you just lift them all. <laughs> yeah. I heavy heavy lifter. I think it was just adrenaline at that point. Cause one I think once I got excited is when I saw his like I had like I like walk you know like walk the dog kind of like up the side of the boat to where I had that piece of electrical tape on the bright work, and I looked back and his tail's like way past it. So I was like, oh, he's got to die. You know what I mean? Like I was just you know, and then it's like you know I was telling you before the podcast it doesn't feel real, but that but that that again what I was going back to was the bite is that he showed up on the right dredge, took the right dredge away from him, came up from the teaser, and literally everybody on the boat. Oh my, all of our guys, it was, it was just perfect scenario. Someone was on, you know, everybody, you know, get, you know, right flat, left flat, you know, right flat covered, left flat covered, left longs covered. I had the right long in my hand. You're not leaving buddy. And he faded off the teaser. Obviously didn't hit the left and the right flat. And I caught him on the right long when he was leaving. I actually had the leader and I had a hooker head on it. I have the leader, the hooker head, and actually it's kind of gross, but I don't give a shit. Uh, some of the ballyhoo is still in it. <laughs> it's hanging from the rear. It's hanging from the rear view mirror in my truck. <laughs> gotcha. But uh, I had it. You know, it, it, well, it's that you d- your dream of that uh, not uh, not gaffing it probably won you the tournament because I mean I don't know if the yeah, two pounds, man. Yeah, catch twenty three gaff mm-hmm. there, fish or not, but you know, two pounds is you know two pounds like that. Then and, and with a fishing like this, like it it all matters, you know. So that's yeah. kind of that was smart. Yeah, I, I had, I was, I mean, you know, don't ice the fish and, you know, keep it as natural as possible. And we killed, we killed that fish at like 1130. Yeah. And kept fishing. And I, I just kept like checking on it and like, make, like kind of like touching it. Still make there. Sure it wasn't sure dry. Still yeah. There. You know, I knew we might've had a chance and I didn't want to, you know, I played sports all my life. You know, you know, it ain't over until it's over kind of deal. And, uh, the, I think three whites were killed we were like three whites were waiting that day including ours the one white got in there before we did and theirs didn't qualify and then we weighed ours in and then you know we're at 75 pounds to take over first which was uh i I, you know couldn't believe it you know what feeling i'll never forget um but then there's a the white there's i forget what boat it was they're behind us and they had apparently they had a white and they didn't make it either basically 10 minutes later, the scales closed and got to sail in the mid Atlantic with a white marlin. Pretty cool. Just, I'd tell you what's really, really cool. Uh, that is the, uh, the emotion, I guess. And like, 
once we found i mean you can see it if you, i don't know if you've ever seen the video but when that chris booth the waymaster up here you know said 75 pounds like i admit it i don't care i just had tears just start rolling out of my eyes because you know you just took first place and you know the second one of, you know not even the second one of the biggest bill fishing tournaments it's not not even bill fishing but you're gonna try to kill something in it but like you just you're gonna win you know taking first place in that and then what really got me is seeing how fired up Steve was and how excited he was and to get, you know, hug, you know, give your captain a hug and just be like, fuck yeah, buddy, we did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, yeah. it's something. It's a good feeling. Definitely uh, hard to replicate that. Yeah. And it was, that night we got back here and even my boss and our crew was like, you can breathe now, Cody. Like, you know, you can breathe whatever. And I, um, you know, I, my phone went nuts and uh, I called my parents and, told them about it and i got to hear from the first two people that called me were the last two first mates that i worked underneath as their second mate it was really cool to hear from them and you know text messages from previous captains that i worked for and that night i, I didn't go out that night i didn't get hammered or none of that crazy into that stuff I, I think i left the boat at like midnight and i went home i have a little apartment up here in cape may where i stay and i just laid there on the couch and stared at the ceiling it's unreal that's awesome no, it's, I forget it's, too and since you're like the first guy to wear the one of the teak shirts on the sh the, the pod, yeah. Um, which you know haven't really we haven't talked any of the billfish stuff at least part of our gear, but that's a newer gear. Uh, I know mm -hmm. a lot of people were almost completely sold out of the first order. You know how to how do you like that new stuff? I mean, I know it's a lot. Uh, to me, it's a lot better. Old stuff, but what's yeah, your, it's what's definitely yeah, to me. Uh, it's it's way better. I don't want to. I mean. Whatever you want my opinion. I don't even want to wear the other stuff anymore. I, I like this the best. Uh, it's very light. Um, big fan. I mean, I don't use the finger holes, but it's cool looking, I guess. But uh, the hood, I mean, I I don't know. I never was like a hood wear type person. I think every fish, every shirt I wear now has a hood on it. And these are really nice. I have a huge noggin. It covers my head really well. It doesn't fall off. And even if uh, you got, if you wear headsets on your boat, it stays up there. It's very comfortable fitting. It doesn't, and it doesn't feel like bulky at all very very comfortable i get anthony's thoughts on them yeah i need to get some maybe get some for the boat you guys have a Even, you guys have a heavy hoodie too right like, like a, like the a sweater? V2 hoodies yeah 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 are you still uh are you still doing woodworking and stuff or yeah. like your teak stuff yep i'll do a couple of chairs this winter nothing crazy so cool you can do ours <laughs> yeah send Your it mind. down send them this way can i don't think ours has been done since 2016 i try it. waxing it to make it look pretty but it just doesn't help <laughs> cool yeah, man. and hopefully our winter season is a lot better than our summer season hopefully well, are you gonna go to the dr no yeah. i don't think so there's no there's no there's no talk of it right now so riceville beach for us and then i think we'll see where where we go afterwards so i don't i, don't, I wouldn't anticipate us going anywhere i was it's a long ways from the DR to Ocean City and back. Yeah, yeah especially we're, we're at, to the DR, especially at seven dollars a gallon in some of those places. So that's yeah, crazy. I'm I'm just excited to travel and just asking all kinds of questions to people, what to do and what to expect, and just get after it and go see angry blue marlin. I don't yep. care if they're two hundred pounds, it's still blue marlin. If you uh, catch a two hundred pounder, yeah, let me know. Just, yeah, <laughs> just a big one. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, see again, I don't know. And perfect. Because I, I forget who I talked to that fished there. I'm like, what was the biggest fish you caught there? They caught 400. I'm like, I don't care. It's 400 pounds. That's a fucking big one. I caught like, yeah. That's like a grander. Dude, I don't... People talk about, like... I think I may, may have caught five that were over 400 my entire life. I'm you know what? I don't, I don't, it can weigh 50 pounds. It's still Blue Marlin to me. I was watching that video from the Bad Company over there in the Azores. Oh, that they, uh, their new one? Yeah, and I was like, like I've never seen two. a big Blue Marlin in my life. <laughs> those fish are huge oh, I, I just watched both those videos i think it was putting on a show huh the dorsal yeah, fins are so high <laughs> that's a nice one i don't know if they just they got i mean obviously they probably got a professional cameraman but it's like on the teaser you just there's just this giant dorsal fin in this wake behind it i don't i, don't know. I haven't seen that sort of Have stuff you, you no know? nah, you know who has good videos is that that shoe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. dude those some of those videos you see some of those fish paddle in you're like yeah. gosh damn that's a big one that's a yeah leave a huge see? weight but like it's like an iphone like behind the angler and you just see like Doosh! yeah like, <laughs> 200 yards back like, gosh damn yeah see yellowfin tunas don't do that like if you do that in dr you like you, you <laughs> see like uh you just see like a little 
little thing come out of the water. Yeah. Like a little pin drop. No, but the DR Marlins, they they definitely leave. I felt like they left like they they got the best of me on the teaser. Yeah, like, no, they, a, they are they are a aggressive. box full of teaser stuff. Full full of teaser heads and lures that don't have any skirts on them anymore. Now they're hungry. So make sure I got plenty of skirts and extra teasers. Yeah, they're piranhas. Yeah. Or candy. So, so well, cool. Well, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thanks, Good Cody. Appreciate up. it. Congratulations, man. Happy thank for you. Thank you so much. Well, thank thanks you. for uh yeah, thanks for joining the pod. Uh Bill Fish Gear, thanks for wearing the new T gear as well. And uh also check out hookedoptics.com. Uh,